another Sci-Fi Fantasy Saturday. Today's a double feature. We can kind of say we went to the movies. I did uh, Dune earlier. Of course, it's based on the book series, but there's a movie on it too. And Marvel United. Well, there's several Marvel movies. It's kind of based on a comic book though, really. But uh, Marvel United, Guardians of the Galaxy Remix. Thought I would unbox this for you today because uh, I want to get it out because my kids want to get playing on it. Uh, Marvel United is uh, one of many Marvel-themed games that have come out over the last few years, but it is based on the Marvel United series. Uh, I have quite a bit of Marvel United. Here is uh, Enter the Spideyverse. Here's uh, X-Men. And then this was the base box that originally came out, Marvel United. Uh, and it had, you know, the a uh, lot of the Avengers and Red Skull. And you had some other uh, villains that you go up against as well. So what is unique about Marvel United? Well, a couple things. Uh, first off, the, this was the retail edition. I think this came... Uh, extra with Venom, I think, came with this one. Uh, it was exclusive maybe at uh, Walmart, maybe. But um, there was a Kickstarter that came out with uh, bigger versions or, or extra content in it. And in fact, this, uh, I think when it was in the Kickstarter version, had uh, extra content, had Gamora. I don't think Gamora comes in this one. You're getting uh, uh, Star-Lord and uh, Groot and... Uh, Rocket, um, and then a villain in here as well, but no, uh, no, uh, Drax and no Gamora. And I think Gamora might have came with the kickstarted version of this. So that's one thing about this is that, uh, the retail versions or the versions that came out after kickstarted might not have all the same, uh, content. I think my Spider Verse one was kind of like that as well. Uh, but what is this system? Well, uh, as you can see here, you're getting some chibi kind of minis in here. They're not, uh, they're okay. They're, 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 they're a little on the cutesy side, but still uh, kind of cool. Um, but this is a cooperative game uh, that uh, plays very well solitaire. It plays just as good solitaire as it does cooperatively but it does play very well cooperatively and um i played it with all my kids but my uh, my two girls really uh enjoy playing this game because it, it it doesn't uh outstay its welcome it plays relatively quickly and it gets uh right into the action so in this game here you're going to get um ronin star lord uh groot and rocket um, and they have unique decks. It is, uh, it's not necessarily a deck builder. You, you have a unique deck that you're playing with and you're going to draw from that deck. And that deck is also kind of your life too, that if you, that if you have to discard and you run out of cards, then you're, you're going to get, uh, going to get, uh, KO'd or knocked out or, or, or can lose the game because you don't have any cards. And the cards is what lets you do stuff during the turn and then the uh, villains are going to have their own deck of cards that does stuff and there's going to be unique setups for the city uh, that you're flying around or, or traveling around and trying to accomplish certain missions in the city but let's uh let's get inside this box and see what it looks like um and and all this is you know backward compatible. I mean all this is completely interchangeable. Uh, you can pull out you know Star Lord and have fight fight him against you know Red Skull and uh, or bring in Captain America and Hulk to fight against Ronan. I mean it's all completely uh, uh, interchangeable. And then the different cities that uh, escapes that might come in this box can be interchangeable with any of the other ones that you get in the other boxes as well. So what you get with this, you're going to get uh, the rules, which it, it, this is an expansion. You you need you need to have the um, a base game to play with this. But um, this talks about some of the unique stuff. You know, it talks about the components, and then maybe it, like this has Plan B challenge. So this might have a different challenge that comes along with this. But that's about it. I mean, if you have the base game, you know what all this stuff means anyway. Um, so we got some extra KO tokens here. Uh, 
that is a little bit that's something that's a little bit different uh then let's have to read up on that they have relatively nice inserts in here that keep everything uh tight in the box so you get the uh the kind of the chibi minis here there is ronin and the minis are nice they're nice thick they look good um if you don't mind having the the bulbous heads they they, they are still uh very functional and uh kind of cool and they're all all everyone in the series is to, to the same kind of set and and uh graphics and and uh, scale so they're all interchangeable that way as well rocket looks just kind of normal right he's got a little bit of bulbous tail but he looks like looks like rocket which should look uh then you've got groot one of my girl's favorites there who is not a, a fan of groot then you're going to have these are the extra um you know cityscapes or cards that you can put around the table and you know the, the each villain is usually going to have their own card here that you have to resolve this and beat this and then once you once you do then uh then this this becomes uh an ability that you can use when you go here when you go to the milano um and then this is a place here where this is where you keep track of beating this and then this is the place where you're going to have uh either uh was it thugs or innocent bystanders or civilians or something that will we'll go there yeah there's an example of of how it's this is pre-populated right and then this is just open for whoever's going to go there but these are interchangeable you can you'll put these around you'll have I think, like six uh in a game uh and so you can use all the six from here or you can interchange them with other ones in the game and it gives you a little bit of different variety of the different places like this is this these are all themed to Guardians of the Galaxy, so you have Nowhere, Morag, Collector's Museum. So you've got all these different places here. Sorry, I'm kind of cutting off the bottom there. So And so like if, once you reveal this, you defeat this, and once you reveal this, uh, end of turn, you may gain uh, a, a wild token, right? And so... Uh, this one at end of turn you may discard if you're here you get to discard one action token to draw one card so you know th these add some new abilities that that interact with the game as well so you're going to get that theme to guardians of the galaxy here's ronin the unique villain for this uh, set and this tells you if you're playing two players how much life he gets three players how much life he gets and four players you know he starts out with 12 life and in order to defeat him, you've got to knock out all 12 of the life. But in order to hit him, you've got to uh, reduce one of the three uh, um, um, uh, uh, requirements, I should say. There's usually a requirement that you rescue so many civilians or, or you kill so many or, or defeat so many thugs or you, you know, def uh, collect uh, so many of these uh, uh, winning uh requirements for these uh cityscapes or these these locations uh and the, it's random on which one uh, that is but once you defeat the right one or complete the right task then you can start uh, uh you have access to knocking him out so the the villain's going to run around and do what he wants for or she wants for quite a bit of time until you've met one of those basic requirements in order to have access to to hitting him uh, then the the rest of the game is going to be the card sets the every everyone has a unique card set including you know the villain uh, and that's really how the game is played you're going to play a card and use its symbols and and then the other somebody else is going to play a card and then uh depending on what point of the game it is uh You'll just keep doing that until I think there's like three and then the villain does its turn. And then but at some point, if you've met some of the requirements of the game, it, it, the villain starts activating after two cards are played and, and the like. So here are uh, here's Groot's deck here. And so he's going to have stuff that's unique to to him. You know, like like I am Groot. That means he only can use this. But once he plays this and this is down, if someone else plays like uh, Rocket plays its card, it can use its special ability. It can't use Groot's, but it can use Groot's symbol, whatever that symbol is down here. So it'll have a punch and a star, you know, for, uh, sorry, I've got them all mixed up now. 
Um, and so that's basically you're trying to do a line of actions that allow you to move around the board, accomplish certain tasks, uh, and eventually trying to set yourself up to attack the villain and knock the villain out. Now, some villains have special uh, uh, activations or they might do different things. Each villain is unique. Each character is unique. Some of the cards are a little samey, but they do have some special abilities and their assortment of symbols is different. So there is a asymmetrical powers in this, asymmetrical decks, and the villains are definitely asymmetrical. So Groot, uh, Groot has a lot of uh, special abilities. Sometimes mo most characters only have like a couple of the, or a few of these and Groot looks like every card he's got something, something special on him. So he's definitely special there. Uh, so that's Groot's deck. Um, here's Rockets. Get a quick look at that. See, that's normally how they are. Like he that that allows him to move, and then he can move and punch, and uh, punch, punch, and punch, punch, and random. You know that that gets a wild. It can be anything. And then here's some special. So he has like three cards with special uh, abilities that only he can use, whereas Groot had, I think almost every card had something special. Then you have Star-Lord here. Um, got a lot of movement, of course, because he's got those jets. And he's got a lot of double symbols, so he's kind of unique that way. And then he's got like three, you know, cards that have, you know, special abilities that only he can use. And then you have the uh, the villain, and then oh yeah, here here are the uh, so here's a different challenge, Plan B challenge that was explained over here. Uh, then here are those threat cards that we were I was talking about. So this is defeat thug. So once you fill this up, then you're going to be able to uh, have access to uh, maybe attacking him. It, it all depends on the, the the main player board that's in the the base set will tell you whether. Uh, whether you can have actually attack the villain or whether the villain activates after uh, two uh, rounds. And I can't remember what the third one was. I don't know if you like draw a card or something. But this is rescuing so many civilians. And this is clearing threats. So once you've cleared six threats and there's six locations on here, then you've completed this task. So these tasks are going to be randomly put out on... Um, this is for the Plan B challenge, but these are similar to what, what you're going to see in the base set. But once you complete these tasks, it's going to allow you, give you access to, you know, eventually, hopefully, attacking the villain, which is what everybody really wants to do or what you want to do as a superhero. These are the threat cards. Now, these cards are, are going to be going on the locations. So you'll put a, put a threat down here. Uh, and then sometimes these threats are activated. It will tell you, you know, when they're activated or how they're activated sometimes. Uh, uh, usually it's the BAM. The BAM feature usually activates the threats, I believe. It's been a while since I played this. But um, so like here's how you eliminate this threat. You're going to need to play a move token, a star token, and a punch token here. Uh, not just use them to do – like a punch will get rid of a thug and a star rec re rescues a civilian. And a move lets you move around the board. Uh, to these different locations but here you'd have to place a token there into in, then you'll clear this threat you'll take that token put it on the clear threat uh challenge which was here and then um hopefully eventually unlock that but then once you've cleared the threat you now have access to this so you get this end of turn ability when you have somebody there you get that end of turn ability so you've got different threats they're going to be randomly put around the board at the different locations uh and again every villain has their own threat deck so there's a lot of uh, asymmetrical abilities there and then every villain deck is going to be different so this is ronin's deck so you'll flip this card over, then he doesn't move at all, but he does a BAM. And this tells you what you do on a BAM, right? Uh, this one, where's one where it says, a lot of times they just have a number, but he's going to move clockwise to the next location with no heroes. So he's going to move clockwise around the board to the next location with no he uh, no heroes, and then he does a Cree Law. He adds a thug to every location, right? So that that and if you a lot of times if you have overflow, like if you have too many uh, civilians or too many thug tokens, and you can't add it to a location, then this is what happens. It deals damage to a hero at that location and what have you. So 
it's kind of like the old pandemic, you know, when you have an outbreak, uh, you can have overflow. And so you're wanting to keep down the number of thugs on a board, number of civilians, plus you're trying to rescue them to unlock these certain things. And you're trying to do that before, you know, Ronan's going to win out and you want to unlock the special challenge to start attacking him to get rid of his hit points to win the game. That's don't use this to uh, to play the game. It's just a, a very, very crude overview. And so this would, would happen, he'd move, and then this is what happens. Wherever he's located at, this is going to get two civilians, and then the, then the, then the adjacent uh, locations are going to get one civilian. So very, very relatively simple AI mechanics. They work very well, though. They're very uh, – it's not too hard. It's relatively intuitive. Uh, and it um, – as I said, it, it, uh, it's not that uh, complicated of a game. But yet it is a challenge. It, it is it's, – it's, it's somewhat puzzly, and it is definitely uh, a challenge. I don't know where this one goes back in here. Maybe it goes right there. We'll put, we'll put it right uh, – We'll put it here and we'll put that there. How about that? And these need to go back in somewhere. So there you have it. This is what you get in a box of Marvel United Guardians of the Galaxy Remix. So uh, if you like Marvel United, uh, then which is a really good cooperative game that doesn't take too long, doesn't is not very hard to learn, but does offer up a lot of different variety and a lot of different challenges. Um, then if you like Guardians, if Marvel United the game and you like Guardians of the Galaxy, then this is probably something you want to get. But there's a lot in this series on Marvel United. I don't even have all of it. I don't even have close to all of it. There's, you know, there's the Asgards, there's different X-Men, there are Deadpool. I mean, uh, just about everything in the Marvel Universe is uh is in this and these are mostly expansions so you're going to need a base set like this one x-men is a base set uh and this one marvel united with the avengers these two are base sets they have all everything you need to play the game uh and you'll need to you know pull a couple of boards out of this uh game boards in order to really play the game there so anyway that's what i have for you today uh marvel united uh guardians of the galaxy remix love to know your thoughts on this one do you like marvel united uh do you like the system do you like how it plays love to hear your thoughts on that or if you don't like it or if you think it's kind of cheesy or you think it's too simple or too gamey or too puzzly love to know your thoughts on that as well as i said my family generally likes it enjoys it uh, i've played it solitaire as well uh it uh it does feel a little puzzly trying to get the cards right but still an enjoyable experience uh so if you uh kind of like what you see here and you like marvel universe then this is definitely something you might want to check out anyway that's what i have for you today kind of a double feature gone to the movies kilroy goes to the movies maybe i'll do that as a new uh, new segment anyway take care and have a good one <laughs>